Although Wingscape is meant to be a vector design app, that doesn't mean it can't be used to edit photos as well. In fact, I'd even go as far as saying that Inkscape can handle certain photo editing tasks better than some pixel-based editors. One example of such would be when applying color overlays to your photographs, which we'll be demonstrating in today's tutorial. Before we get started with the lesson, I'd just like to take a moment to give a special thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. ExpressVPN helps you secure your privacy when browsing the internet. They do this by routing your network activity through their secure and encrypted servers. Not only does this prevent your ISP from seeing your web browsing activity, but it also makes it more difficult for advertisers, websites, and government agencies to track you by allowing you to mask your IP address. ExpressVPN only invests in premium servers, which makes them consistently faster than other VPNs. They offer 24-7 customer support if you ever need it, and setting it up couldn't be easier. In just a few clicks, I was able to connect and continue on with all of my design research with the peace of mind of knowing that my privacy is secure. ExpressVPN is your all-in-one VPN provider. Click the link in the description below to sign up today and get three months for free. So to get us started here, I'm first going to show you how to do this manually using a single color with blend modes, and then I'll show you how to do this using the duochrome filter in Inkscape. So the first thing I want to do here is import my image onto the canvas. Now there's various different ways to do this, but my preferred way of importing images is to just click and drag the image file onto the canvas. Let me show you what I mean here. If I bring in my folder with my image, all I have to do is just click and drag this onto the canvas like that. And then I will get this little prompt right here that asks me if I want to embed or link it. I'm going to choose to embed the image and click OK. And there you go. As you can see, the image has been embedded. So let me zoom out now. I'm going to hold control and roll down my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit so I have a better look at this. And to move my page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Now what I want to do is resize the document to be the same size as this image right here. So with this image selected, press Control, Shift, and R on the keyboard, and it will change the document to be resized around this image. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create a rectangle and make it the same size as this image. So let me right-click this image and go to Copy. Let me grab the Rectangle tool over here, and I'm going to click and drag on my canvas to create a rectangle. It doesn't need to be the same size as the image. It just needs to be any size. We're going to address that right now. We just go to Edit, go to Paste Size, and select Paste Size, and it's going to take the image size that I have copied to my clipboard and apply it to that rectangle. Now I'm going to grab the selection tool and I'm going to change the color of this rectangle to whatever color I'd like my overlay to be. So for this example, I will use a blue shade. So I'll come down here to my palette and I will choose a shade of blue like that. And now I want to center this up over the image. So let me hold shift and click on the image. So I have both the rectangle and the image selected and I will open up the align and distribute menu, which is located over here. You can also access that by pressing control shift and a on your keyboard. Within the Align and Distribute menu, I want to make sure that I have the Relative 2 set to Last Selected, and then once that's enabled, we can center it vertically and horizontally like that. And as you, as you can see, the rectangle should be directly over the image now. So let me click off of the graphic to deselect everything. I'm going to select just this rectangle right here. And now I'm going to open up the Fill and Stroke menu, which is located up here, or you can access it by pressing Control, Shift, and F on the keyboard. Once we are in the Fill and Stroke menu, if you look down here to the bottom right of the menu, you will see this drop-down menu for blend modes. By default, the blend mode is set to normal, meaning this rectangle looks like a normal rectangle with a solid fill. We can change the way that this object interacts with objects positioned beneath it, though, by changing this blend mode. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to change this to Multiply. And as you can see, it changes the appearance of the image, or the way that the rectangle interacts with the image beneath it. And if I use my arrow keys, I can cycle through all of the different blend modes we have here until I find the uh, color overlay that I prefer. Now this one right here seems to work pretty well. The, the effect I'm looking for is just a simple color overlay, and what this one does, the color blend mode, it just takes the color and applies it over the image nicely like that without making too many other changes. I should mention, though, that every single image is different. So if you're working with a, a different image than this, you may want to cycle through these blend modes to see which one works best. Now, as you can see here, if I take this object and move it off of the uh, image over there, you can see it looks the same as it did before. The only difference is the way it interacts with the objects beneath it like that. 
And if you don't like how this works and you want to go back to having a regular solid fill rectangle at any point, you could just select it and set the blend mode back to normal like that. And as you can see, it's now a regular rectangle again. So now let's have a look at an arguably easier and maybe even better way to do this using the Duochrome filter in Inkscape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my image right here and I'm gonna come up here to where it says filters. I'm looking for color and then I will choose Duochrome. And once you've done that, you're gonna get this little menu right here. The first thing I wanna do with this menu is where it says live preview, I wanna enable that checkbox right there. And as you can see, when I enabled that, it applied two different colors to my image. It applied the color blue to the darker shades and it applied the color green to the lighter shades. And the reason why is because color one up here in this tab is set to blue and color two up here in this tab is set to green. Now, if you wanna change your colors, you could do so very easily up here. Say, for example, I wanna change the darker shades from blue to something else like pink. I can do that as well if I want to. I can change this like that. And there we go, now we have pink in the darker shades. I may even wanna make this a little darker so you can see it better, but I'm sure you get the idea. That's one way that you can do that. And if I come over here to color two, I could change that, the lighter shades to something like yellow to change up how that works. Okay, and once you're finished, you can go ahead and click apply and then close out of the menu. That is how you can go about applying a simple color overlay or even a duotone effect to a photograph using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.